Let me show you how this works, guys. Um, a lot of people, the videos I've seen on YouTube, they don't get this right of how to thread this old Kenmore. And where they fail is in this tensioner. Now, if you look at the way these tabs are set up on this machine, it guides you where things are going to be. Like, you know, the thread is supposed to go here and then it's supposed to be held on that hook so it's going to go down. And then it's got this little ramp here. It's showing you to put the thread through and then there's another tab up here. You know what I mean? Once you see it done, it's pretty easy. So you feed it from the right-hand side of the spool, right? Don't matter about my messy house. Learn how to do this so you get the proper tension. So basically, you're just going to wrap this around here, right? So just come right around the top, and it's going to go in this hole right through here, right? So you're trying to feed it in that hole. And then you'll see that there's a ramp. It's saying go up in there. So if you just look at the mouth, like you're feeding the alligator, you're going to feed that mouth, and then you're going to come around, and you're going to feed that mouth. It's hard to do unless you got some um, tension on the spring or on the thread so you can get it underneath. So now we've come through there. Now it's trying to guide it vertically. It's going down. So if you see this little tab here, it's saying, hey, rest the thread on that little tab right there, not on the back side, right on the front, and it will fall in place. So now you're between the discs. And basically these discs act like a sandwich. Right, so when you're on zero, the discs can slide, and the discs engage when the presser foot's down. All right. All right. So we've gone into the discs in the center, and we're going to come up around the front. And this is where a lot of people just go up on this tension spring, and they'll run it inside this guide and go up, and they'll feed it through here. Well, that's wrong. The thread has to go all the way around the disc and then back down and out. So let me show you how that works. This is where everyone fails. All right, so I'm gonna hold my finger on this thread up here so I can get some tension. And we'll see where we're gonna lift that spring up and it's gonna ramp that thread right behind the middle. You see that? And then it's gonna rest right there and then the spring falls. Now you've got tension capability on this thread that goes in at one o'clock or 12 o'clock and it comes out at 10 o'clock. Now you go up through this guide here, right? And then you feed it through this loop and it comes back down like this. I'm not gonna do it with one hand. It'll come back down through here and it will pull inside there and then it will pull inside here, right? And then it will come around the back here and it'll be in that loop and then you thread the needle. But the most critical piece is the way this is set up, guys. It's got to go up and over this tab. And then it can go up this guide. Feed through the loop, back down, through that guide, through that guide, into the needle. And then you can thread, you know, interlock the uh, thread between your bobbin and your top thread. Then you can set your tension at about three to get started. The problem is, if you don't have the tension set correctly and it doesn't, like, grab those discs, and you can tell if it's working. You see how these discs are all loose? They're moving around. Now watch what happens when I drop the presser foot. See, the discs are tight now. Loose, loose, loose. Tight, tight, tight. And, the you know, the tighter you put them, see, they're not moving at all now. Now it's like grabbing it really tight all the way around that disc, all right? So without the proper tension, so tension's based on thread strength, diameter, and then what kind of material you're using, you know? If it's really soft and you don't want it to bunch up, you're gonna have to back off the tension. If uh, your thread's not pulling tight on the bottom, you know, you look underneath of your garment, Typically, the top thread is going to be on the bottom because it latches, and then the bottom thread from the bobbin will be at the top. So if you do two different color threads, like, say, a white bobbin thread and a red top thread, you'll see exactly what's happening. If it's loose in the red thread, 
you need to do more tension on the top. If it's loose on the white thread, the bobbin thread, there's a way to tension this. And uh, I can show you that on this particular machine. These older machines are a little different than the newer machines. You see this little, um, let's see if I can get it to focus here. I'm about to set it down and do this here. Sorry about this really horrible camera work. There's a screw. Sometimes there's two screws and sometimes there's just one. This one's just one. This is a spring. If it has two screws, it's gonna have one small screw. The big screw tightens down this um, spring against this thread because when you feed in the thread for the bobbin, you wanna be able to like lift it up, but like yo-yo it out. You don't want it to fall to the table because it has to have more tension. And again, when you're sewing your garment, if your loops are loose, you don't have enough tension. If everything's tight and bunched up, you've got too much tension. So the key to sewing is not only just the settings for your speed and all that kind of stuff, but I think the most critical thing is getting the proper tension. And if you don't thread your machine correctly, you're never gonna get the proper tension. Thus, you're gonna have problems sewing. All right. Hopefully that makes sense to you. This is the biggest error I see when people threading their machines. It needs to come out, come down through the bottom of the discs, up through the discs, around the lip, and then this tension spring holds it down. Then you can go up your guide, through your loop, back down the guide, through that guide, through this guide, and into the needle. All right. Hopefully that's helpful. Sorry for my long drawn out explanation. With one hand, a cell phone at midnight. See ya.